Another screen we'll be dealing with is the task list screen. Its main job is to display the list, which includes particular tasks which we've added to be performed. We'll be able to display and modify the task contents here. Additionally, on the top, we'll have the actions which allow creating a new task or refreshing the content of the already added tasks. We'll start with creating this activity, then we'll deal with moving to it from the place where we logged in. We do it by right-clicking on the app directory and choosing the New Activity option. Here we can choose various types of activities, including, for instance, a blank activity, which we've already used. After choosing the right type, we see the wizard which we used at the very beginning. We can enter the class name of our activity here. We immediately get a new layout name as well as the title to be displayed, which we change to Toto Expert because we want it to be displayed in our entire application. Additionally, we have the possibility of selecting that it'll be the activity displayed in the launcher. We've selected this option to facilitate the testing. This way, we won't have to move from the login screen to the list. We'll be able to immediately go to the list view by starting the app from the launcher or from the Android Studio level. We leave hierarchical parent and package name as default. A new activity is created, so a new layout is created as well. We can start this activity from the previous code, that is, from the place where we managed to log in correctly. As before, we prepare an intent to which we pass the context and the class name. Using the new intent, we start the activity. We can test the code prepared this way. After entering the correct login data, we get a toast, and additionally, our activity is started. As its name suggests, we wanted our activity to include a list of elements. We can do this by using an ordinary list view and inserting it into the layout, adding the right ID to it, and setting the height and width to match parent. After extracting it using find view by ID, we'll get a list view where we're able to modify the content. Another solution is to use a list activity. It's a special class deriving from the activity which automatically deals with certain things related to the activity. For instance, the access to the list view, which is automatically extracted from the layout. To do so, we have to change the base class from activity to list activity.
In order for the system to be able to automatically recognize where our activity is, we have to add a specific name for the list view. It's a pretty important element. Earlier, we used the transparent color, which was defined as one of the constants which are built in in Android. According to the same principle, we can use IDs defined as constants. In our case, we're interested in the ID named Android ID list. It's a special ID used in places where there is a need to obtain access to the list. By assigning a special ID, our activity is able to extract the list activity and obtain access to it the moment we perform set content view. For the time being, we won't use the list view. Let's leave it for later when we have some data to be displayed. Currently, it's more important to deal with the action bar. We can see what it's supposed to look like in our slide. Here we have a plus icon, a refresh icon, and three dots, where we can find an additional menu which will be displayed below it. If we have physical hardware back, home, and menu buttons, in older devices, pressing such a physical button expands the list which we can see above. 